everyone, how's it going? It's me, it's Jaylene, also known as Fem4. So today I actually wanted to talk about the subject of love. Not only one love, however, but many loves. Today we're going to be talking about polyamory 101. For this polyamorous video, we're going to discuss first what even is polyamory, how it's different from serial monogamy and monogamy, and then we're going to go into the different types of polyamory because there's a whole wide umbrella spread there. After that, we're going to go into, last but not least, the stigmas that polyamorous do have, and I want to break them down for you. First, what is it? Polyamory is basically another term for consensual non-monogamy, also known as CNM. So basically what it means is any relationship that is outside the monogamous mind frame and both parties know about it. And by monogamous, I mean either you're only dating one person and having sex with only one person. Mono equals one. Poly equals more. The thing with monogamy you want to be clear of is cheating doesn't count for polyamory just because it's non-monogamous does not mean that it's consensual non-monogamy and also being single while you're a monogamous person doesn't make you a polyamorous person as well. Some people like to jump from one relationship to the other very very fast or maybe they have to have lots of one night stands and that doesn't actually necessarily mean that you're polyamorous it could also just mean you're a serial monogamous so it means you like to have a lot of consecutive relationships but you're only focusing on that one person during that one time you're with them. To dive into the types of polyamory, I first want to say that even though it's an umbrella, it's also kind of a scale as well. You start here with monogamy and then eventually we rise into basically relationship anarchy. I'll talk to you later about that. So now we're going to break down all the different types of polyamory. So many. Number one, polyamory. With polyamory, it basically means that you have multiple relationships with other people at the exact same time. So whether that is an actual relationship, so what we call and call as a primary relationship, and we identify that mostly as what people think of when they see a monogamous relationship. You love me and I love you. Maybe we're even living together, who knows? There's also though the secondary relationships, which we see as more of a casual sort of thing is what I like to say. So, and for instance, I like to say my lovers are my secondary relationships, while with my actual partners, they're my primary relationship. And secondary relationships are more casual, and there's no harm in that. When you're single, you identify usually as a poly single person, so that generally means is when you are single and having multiple secondary relationships. The second one I want to talk to you about is polyfidelity. With polyfidelity, it means that you like to love a lot of people, but also you don't really want to have too much of an outward bound playing field. Polyfidelity means that you have relationships with two, three, four, five people, but you and those five people are actually all in a monogamous relationship together. So basically it's all closed off. The third one I'm going to show you is the poly-effective relationship. So this necessarily isn't actually a relationship that you are fucking the person or you are even dating the person. It actually is the relationship between you and this one other person who are both dating this person in the middle. And so even though you might not have your relationship and you guys might not actually even hang out, you guys might actually come across each other's past once in a while, so there definitely should be still a relationship there, as you guys are still both probably part of this person's world and really important to them. The fourth one I'm going to go into is an open relationship. This one we see actually happening a lot, especially on Tinder and stuff. You see the unicorn search, you see the bull search. Watch out for my bonus videos so you can hear me explain what a unicorn and bull is. In an open relationship, the couple takes in a third, a fourth, a fifth, basically who's counting into the relationship, but they do remain as a secondary partner. What I mean by that is that when this couple is searching basically for their third, fourth, or fifth person, it just means that these people are the core people, those two people, and then everyone else kind of comes secondary. This is very different than an equal triad that generally can happen. The fifth one I'm going to go into is kind of like an open relationship. However, you're dealing with a lot of other people who have the open relationships, also known as swinging. This emerged in the 1970s and it gained really popular with a lot of married couples because basically what it means is there's no kind of emotion attached to it. They're basically just opening up the relationship for some horny explorations. Even though the key parties have kind of died out in fashion, there's still a lot of sex parties and stuff that you can probably find in your area. The sixth one of the evening is monogamish. So monogamish means basically it's you're still very much a couple, but you want to dip your toes a little bit into other bodies or other people every once in a little while, or maybe on a very little scale. 
Last but not least is my personal favorite and most intriguing is relationship anarchy. Ah, this is one relationship style that a lot of people have trouble wrapping their heads around just because as people we're meaning making machines and we want to make meaning out of a lot of the connections that we have. We want to make sure what is it, where do we stand, what sort of boundaries do we have, also what sort of meaning do we have to this other person. In relationship anarchy there's absolutely no rules, hence anarchy. And what I mean by no rules is that there's absolutely no boundaries or difference between the relationships that you have with your friends and the relationships that you have with your partner. It really is not the end of it all, no ownership over who you are, how you conduct yourself, and the different relationships that you create with different people. Even though it's a lot more of a outward space, this relationship anarchy, it also provides a little bit more of a uniqueness as to you design each relationship specially unique to you. Now we are moving on to the lovely stigmas. These are ones I actually asked my IG followers about what stigmas did they feel had most around polyamory in their relationship. One person said that it's a religious cult thing. Polyamory is not a religious cult. Polyamory and consensual non-monogamy is actually just a conscious love choice. Second stigma is an excuse to be promiscuous or slut. To be honest, if I'm going to be very clear about this is that everyone's a little bit promiscuous because everyone does get a little bit horny. The thing with polyamory is that you have a lot more access to help that horniness or give access to your lovemaking. Another person wrote that you're a greedy slut if you're polyamorous. The one thing about greedy is that with polyamory, one of the main ideas about polyamory and any consensual non-monogamy is that sharing is caring. Another person said that Polyamory does not have any real love or feelings in it. From a polyamorous woman, me, I'm going to debunk that theory with the exception of I actually have a lot of love to give and it's almost too much. So that's why I actually do have more than one person and partner and lover is because I actually feel like I don't want to dote too much on this one person and have them expect that they need to give that much to me in return. I'd rather have this overexpenditure of energy we will split it up and share it between more than one person. And last but not least, another person wrote that they must not love their long-term partner anymore or they're just using basically every other extra relationship that they have made with their open relationship just for sex. Just because you open up your monogamous relationship to polyamory does not mean you don't love your partner anymore. It means that you both are ready to kind of grow and explore the world together in more adventurous ways with other humans. And generally with polyamory, even though a lot of people say it's just for sex, yes, it is one great thing is that we get to explore all these different sex styles and different bodies. But at the same time, we also get to explore the different people and what they love and what they like and what they don't like and all the different adventures that they can contribute towards your life. So last but not least, I'm just gonna leave you with a one little lesson here is basically that whether you're polyamorous, monogamous, relationship anarchist, you have a conscious love choice within yourself and it's no, nothing to do with anyone else about what you want to make for yourself. Just make sure with each choice that you're consciously going into it with a lot of awareness about what your own needs, your own boundaries are, and making sure that your partner is doing the exact same to you as well. Make sure you go follow my IG, Facebook, Twitter for the bonus video where I'm going to be explaining how what a unicorn and a bowl is. And then also make sure you go hit the subscribe button just so you can get some more fun sex education content because this is me, Jaylene Femforth, with all the sex education videos. Thanks for watching everyone and have a good day. Mwah.